Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. In this video, we continue talking about Scala.js, and we have set up a small project that only does Scala.js. Now, we got to a website. The website has some elements on it, but they're all empty, and we had it printing out. And so we have our code here. We printed hello. We had a little for loop, prints one through i. We have some imports here that are specific for Scala.js. <clears throat> um, that was the website that we had set up. In the previous video, I had opened code inside of our original project. Here I've opened it inside of this subproject, and the reason for that is that this allows code to really show the benefit of working in Scala.js. It gets to do autocomplete and error detect. Because this is its own project, I imported the build here. And really, I would argue that's the biggest benefit of Scala.js is the fact that I am using the Scala language and because it is statically typed, the tooling can help me out. So to understand that, let's make this application a little bit more interesting. So right now, nothing pops up, but there are elements in here. We have a a header called title and a div called content and I would like to set those so inside of here how would we do that inside of JavaScript well we'd call get element by ID uh, which is inside of the document and sure enough I can say document dot get element by ID and note that metals is giving me nice uh, autocompletes there in JavaScript you will get autocompletes. The thing is, they might be wrong, right? Because in JavaScript, your tool has no idea what type the object is. And so it's just guessing things that might go well there. In Scala, the tool can actually be certain of exactly what the members are uh, on, a, on a call. In addition to that, it can help you out with error messages. So for example, I often forget when I come back to JavaScript and I haven't used it for a while, I forget, is this ID capitalized or or not? And the creators of, of the HTML standard decided that it was a lowercase t. But if I did this in JavaScript, this wouldn't be an error. One of the beautiful things here is I get an underline that says it's not a, a member. If I did this in JavaScript, it would just go off and it wouldn't be until I ran the page. Now, of course, as soon as I ran the page, we would get a message on this. So I'm going to pull up our SPT. Now, we saw last time that if you run fastops.js, it goes through, and of course, fastops says, well, this doesn't work. So I can't even get to the point where I pull this up on the page and see a message. It just doesn't compile. Now, the need to compile this regularly can seem like a pain. Uh, it turns out if you stick a tilde in front of it, it will sit here and wait for source changes, and every time you make a change, it will recompile. So for example, if I do that, now it has compiled and it says that it's it's happy. So I set, oops, I do, I want to set the inner HTML to just be scala.js as, as my title. To verify that this is working real quick, there we go. We got that title up there. Our compile went through just fine. Now, here again, error reporting. If I were in regular JavaScript and I left out an N. So in the case of the miscapitalization of the D, JavaScript would have printed an error because this would have been an undefined element. And it would have said, oh, you're trying to use an undefined element as a function. And it would have printed in the console some type of error message for me. It would have given me a nice line number. I could have gone and tracked it down. That's not too horrible. This error, though, would have been really bad. Because a typo here, I'm not using this value yet. I'm assigning it. What this is going to do in regular JavaScript is it's going to create a member called <laughs> Einer HTML inside of this element and make it equal to a string. There, that is not an error in JavaScript. You are just creating a new field. And so it is silently going to not change. And the only thing that, that you, the developer, are going to see is the title didn't change. 
Now, in a small piece of code like this, that's not a problem. Okay? We, we only have three functional lines here, one, two, and three. So we'd immediately know where we had done this. But if this were a large project and our JavaScript was spread across uh, many files, that could be challenging, especially because things like this can be caused by interactions across multiple files. And the fact that it is completely silent about it makes life much harder. You could spend hours of your life trying to figure out what went on when you left off an I or you forgot how to capitalize enter HTML. Um, those types of things are going to be largely silent and and they're going to take a much longer time to find than they will in Scala.js. Because in, as we've seen in Scala.js, if I mess up those things like that, I get an immediate feedback on it and it tells me, hey, you mistyped this. Okay, so we've set both of those elements. Here we go. Uh, we have our little website. It's still printing stuff out. What's something else that we could add to this? Well, I am setting the values of elements that already exist. What about adding new elements? And to demonstrate how we could do that kind of in a modular way, I want to make a method called append paragraph. And we're going to pass in a target. Now the target could be any type of thing inside of the DOM. So there is a type called DOM node. Uh, the reason why I imported DOM up here is because that allows me to say, to <clears throat> specify this type easily. Uh, and I want to pass in the text for this string, a string that is going to be what we're going to put inside of a paragraph node, and this will be a new paragraph node that we are adding. And I want to use the, build this up using kind of standard JavaScripty type calls. So first I want to make my new paragraph node. I'll just call it P since that is our element tag for paragraph. And we would use the standard JavaScript call to create an element on the document and say I want a paragraph. I also want to create a new text node. And there is a create text node. And we give it our text. Now I need to add this text node into the paragraph. And so we can append child once again the tool is helping me out here. So I can do very little typing and everything that is being typed is correct. And then we can append our new node, new paragraph, into the target. So how about up here? We go ahead and we add that to our content. So I want to call append paragraph and I want to pass it our get element by ID content. So I'm just going to add this paragraph inside of the DOM. Okay, I hit save on that. Once again, our little fast ops is just sitting here waiting and it did a recompile. And there we go. So we got a new paragraph. It was added to the same div that this text is inside of. Um, and that worked as, as we wanted. So we can modify the DOM this way. Uh, things are fairly straightforward there. We'll come back in the next video and we'll look at two more things that you might want to do inside of, that you might do regularly with JavaScript to, to play with the DOM and we'll see how we can do them in Scala.js.